Hi, this is James from the Hornbill Technical Support Team and this is a short tutorial to show you what BPM is and uh, to give you kind of a general basic overview of how it's configured within SupportWorks. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you that um, where you can grant access rights to the BPM is. Uh, so I'm just going into the properties of my analyst and going into the application rights tab. You'll see here um, within your data dictionary you'll have business process rights um, so you'll have the opportunity to either tick or untick any particular rights that you do or do not want to give from here. So processes are uh, located within file, manage settings and process settings. These are separate, uh, separated out in between the different sections such as um, what well, space on call class so you've got change processes, release, service request processes, um, incident management and problem. Um, so one one thing I'm going to do within here is to show you that uh, within each one of these processes um, you'll have one out of the box process which is active and within here you'll have everything set preset up for you in terms of the actual stages uh, I think the best one to show you in terms of steps would be the uh, service request process I mean this is very simple in terms of only got three stages um, for the actual process itself uh, let's see if the change one is a little bit more rigorous so I'll show you we'll go through this one during our tutorials um, so in terms of this processes um, you can link them to your calls obviously this is based on change requests so you'd expect this to be a selectable option when you log a new change request um, so there should be a field on each one of them that says process here so if you're creating BPM um, processes then these were where they would be appearing um, so in terms of the life cycle of them you'll have to think um, that these processes are uh, running for each one per particular call which means that um, your process will be managing the call from when it starts out and be gets logged to when it's actually closed or cancelled. So you have to think about all them individual steps in between when your call's logged perhaps by your uh, first line support guys f from going into like a um, data uh, sort of recovery stage in terms of getting all the information that you require for the change to be logged and then classifying whether it's a you know an important change request or an emergency or a retrospective one um, whether it requires authorization or needs to go to your cab um, and then obviously you need to schedule the actual request to work um, any kind of documentation that's come from it and then to review it and then finally to go through the closure stages so these are the sort of things we recommend to uh, for you to actually map out yourselves before the creation of the BPM um, so this is just uh, the basics around this the other the other uh, requests in here are slightly more simpler purely because um, usually wouldn't require as much steps as a change request such as uh, service request could be uh, someone wants access to a particular drive, uh, shared drive, shared network location. Um, maybe you need to get authorization from somewhere. This business process can send an email out to a authorizer. They can come back saying yes, it's all authorized, and then you can go to the next stage and then finally complete it. So you can go wild with these. You can create as many stages as you like and make it as complicated as you like. Um, but this is going to be very, very, very helpful. In the next tutorials, what I'm going to do is just go through any uh, all of these kind of individual steps and the functionalities which is available within each of these stages